Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Eki, and I'm so excited to be able to join you this morning and bring you our Bible lesson. It certainly has been a challenging year, and I do miss seeing all of you, but I do know that God is still in control, and He is sovereign. He is good, um, and so I know that there is a purpose for even this. And I, again, am just so glad to be with you, and I'm glad that God's Word is powerful, and it will accomplish the purpose that He's sending it out for, even if He's sending it out on video. So again, glad to be with you here this morning. Let me go ahead and just start us off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for this time that we can spend together. We thank you that your word is powerful and that your word is true. I pray that as I teach this lesson today that you would give me the words to say and give the boys and girls ears to hear what you have for them. I pray that you would open all of our hearts and minds to what you're teaching us through your word this morning. And I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase so that we would see you clearly. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, boys and girls, our lesson today comes to us from the book of Ruth. So I'm going to just show you that here real quick. Here's the book of Ruth. It is in the Old Testament, right after the books of Joshua and Judges. And we're going to cover the entire book. I know that sounds a little scary, but it's just four chapters. And so if you want to follow along in your Bibles, go ahead and take a minute to turn there to the book of Ruth. And we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, some pictures that I want to show you. So the first part of our story begins with two people by the names of Naomi and Elimelech. And you can also see that they had two sons. Well, Naomi and Elimelech and their two sons left their homeland of Bethlehem in Israel because there was not enough food to eat. And this is the journey that they took from Bethlehem to Moab. Now, sometime later, Elimelech died, and the two sons grew up, and they married local Moabite women by the names of Orpah and Ruth. But sometime later, these sons died too, and now all three women were left alone. Now, it was hard to get food for women that had no husbands or sons to take care of them, so Naomi heard there was food in Bethlehem, and she decided to return there. So she told her daughters-in-law to return to their families so that their families could take care of them. One of the women, Orpah, kissed Naomi goodbye and went back home. But Ruth didn't. Ruth insisted on going back to Israel with Naomi. She loved her mother-in-law. In fact, I want you to hear what she said to Naomi in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. So Ruth was loyal to Naomi. Loyal just means that she was giving or showing constant support to Naomi, Or maybe another word that you've heard before is faithful. She was faithful. So Naomi and Ruth traveled back from Moab to their hometown of Bethlehem, or to Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. And this was a very long journey. When the women finally arrived there, many people were surprised to see Naomi. And they asked themselves, can this be Naomi? Well, Naomi went ahead and She sighed and she told them about her life of pain and sadness and how she had lost her husband and her two sons. And now, because of that, the two women were poor and they had very little food. So I'm just going to pause the sharing for just a moment here because what I do want to tell you about is the barley harvest that was coming up. So I've got a couple pictures and things here that I want to show you. So first of all, there was a barley harvest starting in the fields around Bethlehem. 
And so what would happen with barley is whoever the harvester was is they would reap all of the barley. They would tie the stalks together into a bundle called a sheaf. And so there's your word sheaf. And this is a picture of what barley looks like. So you can take a look at that. And I actually even found some barley in my pantry. You can see here, I've got some barley. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of it here in my hand and hold that up so you can see how very tiny it is. You see that right there? But barley was used to make food and to help, it would help feed Naomi and Ruth. So what Ruth would do is she would do something called gleaning. There's that word glean. And so what gleaning is, is, is gleaning is where you would walk behind the workers and you would pick up the stalks that they dropped and the little bits and pieces that they would drop behind them. And so you'll see that here in this picture that that's what Ruth was doing. Ruth was going and gleaning the leftover grain. And this was hard work. It was very hard work, but Ruth kept at it all day long. And the owner of the field, his name was Boaz, he came to the field and he called to the harvesters, the Lord be with you. And the workers called back, the Lord bless you. Now, Boaz noticed Ruth and very kindly told her to continue gleaning in the field. He also told her that whenever she was thirsty, she could go and get a drink from the water jars there. Boaz was what we call a kinsman of Naomi's. That means she's a relative, he was a relative of Naomi's. He was very pleased when he heard from his workers about Ruth's kindness and loyalty to his family member, Naomi. So at mealtime, Boaz invited Ruth to eat with everyone. Well, that night, Ruth took the grain that she had gathered together to Naomi, and Ruth told her mother-in-law that she had been working in the field of Boaz. Well, Naomi was very pleased to hear this. The Lord bless him, she said. That man is a relative of ours. He could be a kinsman redeemer. So a kinsman redeemer in Israel was somebody who was a close relative who bought back, or that's another way of saying redeemed, bought back what had been lost. Well, Ruth ended up continuing to glean in the fields until the grain harvests were finished. And then Naomi told her to go to Boaz and ask for his protection. Naomi hoped that Boaz would be that kinsman redeemer and redeem the land that Naomi had lost in Israel. And maybe that Boaz would take care of her and Ruth. Only a kinsman redeemer could do something like this, and he also had to be willing to do it. Well, Bo Boaz not only agreed to redeem the land, but he also married Ruth so that Naomi's family would continue. Everyone praised God that Naomi had such a loving daughter-in-law and such a kind kinsman redeemer. Now Naomi would have a family to look after her and she would get her land back. God provided everything Naomi and Ruth needed, giving them food and protection that they needed from Boaz, their kinsman redeemer. And sometime later, Boaz and Ruth had a son, and they named him Obed. Guess who Obed ended up to be? He was the grandfather of King David, and he was born in Bethlehem too. Now, do you know who else was born in Bethlehem? That's right, Jesus. Yes, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and he was from the family of Naomi, Ruth, Boaz, Obed, and David. God sent his son to be the Savior for you and for me, and he sent us that Savior from the family line of David, just as he has promised in his Old Testament. 
how good God is to give us everything that we need through our Redeemer, just like he provided for Naomi and Ruth through their kinsman Redeemer, he has provided everything that we need through Jesus, our Redeemer. He paid the price for our salvation. He died on the cross for our sins. And so I want to just remind you of that as you think on our story this week. Just remind yourselves of how much God loves you and how he sent his Redeemer to save you from your sins and how much he loves, provides, and protects you. And I want to just take a minute here at the end of our story to thank God for that. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time that we've been able to have together in your word. Thank you for our Redeemer, Jesus. Thank you that you love us and you protect us and you're kind to us and that you sent us, Jesus, to save us from our sins and to redeem us. I pray, Lord, that you would help each of us to be loyal and kind to others, just as we saw in the example of Ruth being loyal and kind to Naomi. I pray that you would help each of us to be kind that way, too. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much for letting me spend some time with you here today. It's been really great to um, be able to spend this time with you, and I do hope that you will enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much. Bye now.